if you are a msc or a btech graduate who is planning to do phd then you must know what all things you can do after your phd whether it is worth your time or not so in this video we are going to discuss 10 things which you can do after your phd and we are getting started right now Welcome back. So today we are going to talk about this very important and most coveted topic which has been asked several times to me in the past through the comment section of YouTube and that is PhD ke baad kya hua? What is the benefit to well, whether we will get any job? So today I am going to give you 10 things which you can do after PhD. So if you are already a PhD this video is going to be very helpful to you. If you are someone who is planning for a PhD you should know what all things you can do. Okay. And if you're someone who are, is in the BTEC now, that BTEC can also do PhD directly, you should also know about this topic. So quickly, I have 10 pointers. As I said, the first one is do nothing. Well, this is for those who believe in the law of attraction and think that if I just sit at one place and people will come and put food in my mouth, do nothing. But trust me, when you do nothing, you get nothing. Okay. So first pointer is you, you have to be an action taker. Uh, at the end of this video, you must do something to get to somewhere. Okay, so that's the first point. The second one is, of course, industry. So when you get into the industry, what all things you can do? What all things you can get from the industry? The first one is research and development job, formulation and development job, or jobs into the manufacturing sector, QA, QC, maybe various such jobs are available. The next type of job which you get is sales and marketing job, which generally they call it as application scientist or something, but actually it becomes a you know a sales and marketing job or uh, any uh, machine uh, which is being imported from US, UK and is being sold in India or any software which is being exported from European countries, biotech software which is being sold in India. So you get into the sales and marketing division of that, which is also a very good uh, career avenue if you want to get into industry after PhD. So R&D, F&D, manufacturing sector jobs, QA, QC, otherwise sales and marketing jobs. So that's the first type of job you can get in the industry. So what I've done is I've created a complete biotech ladder, biotech career ladder. The link is in the description. Please check that out. That will help you uh, you know, get forward, get ahead into the industry. And I've also mentioned the salaries there. Okay. Now coming to the academia. So once you decide, okay, I don't want to go into industry, I'll go into academia. So in academia, you can become a teacher or a professor, assistant professor. You can even, you know, um, get into private universities, government universities, as well as coaching companies. Now there's, there are a lot of ed tech companies where you can get in. So you can either be a teacher in government universities, private universities, or you can be a teacher in any coaching company or ed tech company like Biotechnica. Next is in the academy also you can be a part of the management where you become HOD or a, a manager or some managerial positions into the entire academic infrastructure. So that also you can become. Okay. Now the, the next thing which uh, is there is research. So okay, I don't want to get into industry. I don't want to get into academia, but I want to get into research. Now research is of two types, postdoc research or government scientist. So you can do postdoc research while you are into a university or you can become a government scientist in some CSIR lab, you know, ICMR lab where you can do some research. So you can also get into postdocs that is further in, further in of research or you can become a government scientist or you know, this, this gives you a lot of career stability, especially the government scientist thing, but uh, you will be a part of the bureaucratic process which you may not enjoy but yeah after a PhD you can do this as well. The next thing which is really absurd which people do is after PhD they go for MBA. I would say this there's no need but yeah people do because they have this knack and learning you know expertise so they do that. So sales and marketing jobs again eventually you will get if you are doing that okay so yeah these are the five things which uh, you do here now let's let's switch to the other five which we have got today and that is entrepreneurship so yeah when you 
have a PhD. Most of the PhD holders, which I have seen, they commercialize their PhD topic and they become a uh, entrepreneur. So basically, they commercialize their suppose their uh, PhD is in uh, mushroom cultivation. So they convert it into mushroom cultivation company or somebody. For example, Google. It was a PhD thesis of two research. Uh, candidates in one of the universities in US and became Google. So yeah, that's where entrepreneurship comes into picture. One of the most rewarding careers you can have is entrepreneurship. The next one is cross domain studies. So now what is cross domain studies is like, okay, you have studied, uh, say, uh, bioinformatics and now you are studying uh, the next level of it, say computational biology. So yeah, cross domain or it's the same domain furtherance of studies can be done. So the, now this can be studying inter-related subjects and furthering your research. So this continues, you can do this as well. Now there are many companies and many universities where this kind of research is going, which, which you can get to know if you are subscribed to Biotechnica's newsletter, which is sent every day at seven o'clock, Monday to Friday. So to subscribe to that, just go to biotechnica.org slash subscribe and you will be subscribed right there. Now coming to the next one, which you can have is applied science. So basically, you know, what you do is you uh, apply your scientific knowledge into critical commercial and scientific challenges and problems. That's where applied science comes. For example, botany is not applied science, but agri, agri biotechnology is applied science. So that, that's where you further your studies into applied science. That's one thing you can do as a PhD holder. The next one, of course, you can go ahead and do your PhD abroad. You don't need a GRE for that. You can directly apply to the labs and they will take you. I've made a separate video about how to do your postdoc abroad. Please check that out. And the last but not the least is YouTube. So if you are somebody, not just YouTube, you can actually become a social media influencer. I would say that's not something you plan to do after a PhD. But if you want to become, you like limelight, you can always do. You can always become an influencer. You can... Uh, be on YouTube, Instagram and stuff like that and educate people there or whatever. But I would say uh, currently the way I look at YouTube and social media, it's actually a bubble and it is going to burst. So if you plan to make a long term career in YouTube, you should think about it because YouTube is something similar to what Facebook was. 10 years ago, 10 years ago, everybody was crazy sharing their personal lives on Facebook. Today, nobody is doing that. Today, everybody is crazy making a video on YouTube. 10 years later, nobody will be watching the video. So that is where it's a bubble. You should not associate your long term career with YouTube. Yeah, side business, it can be fair enough. So these are the 10 pointers which I wanted to make. I'm not going in much detail here, but I'm going to give you a very important hint now, which will help you decide what career you should choose. Okay, so before I give you the hint, here is a request, please put down in the comment section, what kind of career you want to choose after your PhD, no matter wherever you are, let us know in the comment section. So now here is the hint, which I wanted to show you. The hint is very simple. Aapko jo aata hai, Aapko jo pata hai aur jo market ko chahta hai, wahi aapko banana hai. So whatever is the market demand, whatever is your expertise and whatever is your passion, all these three should overlap. Then only you will be able to earn more in the future. So suppose market demand is of CRISPR. If your expertise is also in CRISPR and you are passionate about CRISPR, then you will be able to earn more. So similarly, so basically what is market demand? Market demand is, uh, you know, decided by the trends of the future. For example, today the trend is bioinformatics, quantum biology, quantum computing, quantum chemistry and, um, you know, agri-BT, stuff like that. So uh, CRISPR, but, uh, so drug discovery. So these are the market demand which is going to be there in future. So if your expertise, you start training yourself today about it and if you become passionate about it. Now, what is passion? Passion is all about if even if somebody wakes you up at two o'clock and asks you about it, that can you do this for me and you would love to do it, right? So that is the kind of passion you need to get ahead in your career. So here is what is the summary, which I wanted to tell you 10 things. In fact, more than this you can do. And if you are doing something similar or different, let me know in the comment section, which will help other viewers of this video as well. So this is all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know in the comment section, what kind of videos you want us to make. And we'll definitely 
pay attention to that and you know make videos on that and if you have any other further questions about phd or msc or career forward you know where to go biotechnica.org where your success meets achievement thank you so much for watching have a great day